Welcome everybody. Join me sitting when you're ready. This is where we'll start today. I'm so happy to have you all here. Thank you so much. <sighs> Let yourself take any little adjustments, intuitive movements that help you get settled. And snuggle into your hips. And feel your legs and your feet, bottom of your pelvis starting to root down into the ground. And if it feels good to you, you can close your eyes and let them find a spot on the floor out ahead of you, something that isn't moving that you could let your eyes focus on. Begin to notice your breathing. Allow it to fill your awareness. We'll begin practice today with just a few breaths with a sigh on the exhalation. So when you're ready, inhale in through your nose until you feel pretty full. And sigh it out through your mouth with any amount of sound. We'll do this two more times. Inhale through the nose to fill up. As you're inhaling, feel if you can sit up a little taller through the spine. Let it out with a sigh. Go for one more of those. And just opening up your attention opening up your practice, allowing yourself to be here in this space with your breath, with your body, without any hmm, premeditated outcome. Don't need to have any intention. Don't have to have any expectations of what will happen this evening or whenever you're, whenever this practice finds you, those of you that are watching the recording. And just simply allow whatever comes up, any sensations, any thoughts, any emotions, all are welcome. You get to have whatever experience, whatever rises up for you is perfect. Let's start with just a little bit of kind of activity before we settle into our more yin poses. And we'll begin with a bit of a wrist stretch. So let's start with our left hand. We'll reach your left palm away from you, and the fingers pointing down towards the earth, and have some space between your fingers. And then use your other hand to grab a hold of just the pinky finger and gently pull it back towards your body. Give the pinky finger one deep breath. Just let yourself focus on that breath in and out. And then moving on to the ring finger, grabbing just the ring finger, gently pulling back. Use this moment to feel into any sensations that are happening as you give the ring finger one full breath. Middle finger, when you're ready, grabbing the middle finger, pulling it backwards towards your body. And as you breathe in, noticing the ribs, can you expand the ribs? As you're exhaling out, noticing the ribs soften, settle, moving inwards towards your spine. Grab the first finger, gently pull back. Give the first finger one full breath. And then last but not least, the thumb, grabbing just the thumb, not only pulling back, but can feel for just ever so gently pulling it away from the rest of the hand. As you take that slow inhale, feel any sensations that are rising up in your thumb, in your hand, and then as you're exhaling out, notice that the shoulders could soften any amount. 
and we'll switch to the other side. So just one breath per finger, starting with the pinky. I'm just going to let you go and do this hand all on your own. As you're breathing and you're moving through this finger and wrist stretch, notice if you have any preconceived notions about this part of your body. Like, are your hands or wrists an area that maybe you've been noticing lately? Just see how this pose, this wrist stretch, might assist you to tune in, to pay closer attention to what's going on inside here today. Is it helping us to maybe tune into this moment just by feeling into our hands? So take your time finishing up. When you finish with that, go ahead and reach your arms out left and right, palms facing away from you so you're flexed at the wrists. Fingers pointing up, palms facing out. If that's a lot for the top of the shoulders, I want you to go for bending your elbows a little bit until you don't feel too much strain there at the top of the shoulder muscles. So take a slow inhale, expand through your ribs. And then one finger at a time, starting at the pinkies, curl your fingers towards your palms to create fists. And once you've got fists, curl the hands down towards the floor. Now let's try that again. As you're ready, inhale, open up the hands, spread them open. Fingers point up, palms face out. Big inhale. As you're exhaling out, you're creating those fists rolling one finger at a time into the palm and then rolling the fist down towards the floor as you're exhaling out. Noticing, can you soften in the jaw, the neck, the shoulders while you're here? And then let that go. Let the fingers come down, the hands come down. Bring them out in front of you. Let's go for that last version here. We'll just do these three. So this last one, palms facing forward of you, fingers pointing down, just the primary fingers, the pinky finger through the first finger, just those go to the ground out in front of you. And at first it starts off like just a finger stretch again, slowly inhaling, noticing any sensations that are coming up for you. And as you exhale, you can apply a little bit of pressure Passing the fingertips into the floor, letting the, the fingers bow. You might feel some sensation there at the root of your fingers. That might feel like plenty. So you're in a little bit of a forward fold to reach the ground out in front of you. We can move in a little bit deeper if it feels appropriate. As you're taking your next breath out, try reaching the heels of your hands a little closer to the floor. They don't have to make it all the way to the ground. Maybe they, maybe they come pretty close. Maybe the thumbs can touch down. We'll just take two more full breaths here. As you're breathing, You let yourself feel this channel from your hands all the way up your arms to your shoulders, to the areas around your heart. It might feel good to let your head hang chin towards chest. And when you feel satisfied with that, go really slowly. Feel for inhaling and peeling your hands away from the earth. The torso comes up, just coming back to a comfortable seated position. Let your hands settle in your lap somewhere. Maybe close your eyes or just let them relax. And take two deep breaths. Really following that inhalation all the way through its conclusion. Feel the height of that fullness. Tipping into exhalation, releasing the breath out, letting it go all the way towards as empty as feels good to you. 
And as you take one or two more deep breaths, just like that, sense and feel into your hands. I'm just imagining and connecting into that pathway again, the way that your hands are expressions of your heart, a way for your heart to, to reach out and touch the world. Noticing any sensations, any feelings that are there from your hands to your heart. We'll go for one more kind of movement, one more pose here before we just really sink down and rest. So just to warm up for some of the chest opening, the shoulder opening that we'll do today, I'm gonna do some joint mobility. Bring your right fingertips to the floor, out from your right hip. And then using your left arm only, start to make some circles with this arm out to the left of you. So you're circling forward, up, and around and back. And these circles might be really small. They don't have to be big. We can really start to find a rotation that's, that suits the shoulder joint, yeah? And just make sure that you're breathing as you go. You might notice that your torso, your rib cage wants to get involved. You might start to find uh, a circling that actually lifts those right fingertips off the floor for a brief moment. That's okay too. So you don't have to stay planted with that hand. Let's just go for another couple seconds and then we're going to switch in a moment and we'll switch the rotations. So make sure you circle the other direction. Mind how this feels in your neck, making sure that you let your head follow. Sometimes it helps the neck to actually watch your hand with your eyes and let your torso move, let your head move. Yeah, so let's make sure you're doing the other direction. Let's go for another five seconds or so. And then when you're ready, we're settling into a side bend just for about three breaths. Let right hand plug down into the ground torso leaning over to the right, left arm reaching up and over. You find the position of your head that feels the best for your neck. So it might be keeping the neck aligned with the rest of the spine. Might be starting to let that head lean over a little bit to the right, ear toward shoulder, or even looking down, nose and chin turning towards the floor. And as you take this next breath, feel if you can touch and expand all along that left side of your body from your left hip, left side of your waist, reaching and expanding the inhalation up towards the armpit, up towards those upper ribs. Just a brief moment in neck release. You're welcome to reach left arm to the left reaching left and down, the hand may be hovering about the height of the hip or so. And this might be a great place as we're opening up that, that mm, pathway between neck and shoulder where you might let your jaw hang a little looser, make sure the back molar teeth are not touching each other. Maybe try one more breath here using that sighing technique that we did at the beginning of practice, inhaling in through your nose. Sigh it out through your mouth. Now, if your head is leaning over to the right, leave it there. As you come up, inhaling back to center when you're ready, head still leaning over to the right. Right hand goes to the head and gently cradles the head back upright. If it's interesting to you, you could cross the legs the opposite way, and then we'll do that little shoulder mobility stuff, the circling on the other side. So left fingertips touch down at the floor out from your left hip, and we're just going to start making these circles with the right arm. And this shoulder might have a totally different experience of this, and that is okay. 
So it doesn't have to match the same circumference of the other arm, the way that the circles, how big or small they are, it doesn't have to match. You might notice, as long as there's no sharp mm, electric kind of sensation, you might hear little clicks and pops, and that's okay. And again, you might really let your torso start to get involved. Might help to, again, kind of watch the hand with the eyes so that your head can follow. And then in the next moment or so, go ahead and switch the directions. We'll just be here for another couple seconds. Notice any sensations, warmth, tingles. Sometimes people describe when your fascia starts to warm up and lubricate, feels like little effervescent bubbles like in soda pop. And when you're ready, you can let that settle into a side bend. So left hand will plant down. Hips stay plugged into the earth, torso leaning to the left, right arm reaching up and over. Just about three breaths here. We won't stay here long. Visualize your right lung, right side rib cage. When you're inhaling, feel for the lung filling with air, the ribs expanding to make room for your lung to expand. As you exhale out, can anything soften top of shoulder? Let the upper arm bone root into the shoulder joint. And eventually, when you're ready, just take a couple breaths in neck release arm position. So the right arm will reach to the right and down. Right hand may be hovering about the same height as your pelvis on the right side. Ah, find a place, a position for the head that makes your neck feel really luxurious here. Doesn't necessarily have to be a very strong sensation of stretch either. I just feel like the neck feels neutral. And then when you're ready, if your head is leaning over to the left, leave it there as you're coming back up. Torso comes up first. And then the left hand can come to the head and assist the head back up. And let your hands rest somewhere in your lap again, palms up or palms down. Relax your eyes and take two full breaths. Just experience whatever's happening in your shoulders your arms and your hands right now. Awesome. So moving into our first restorative pose, we're moving into a variation of child's pose. So come on into a hands and knees position first and bring all your props along with you. <laughs> if you have blankets or a bolster, those can be really helpful. I'm gonna grab those for myself. I have like a more medium sized bolster, so I like to actually stack a couple blankets on top of it to make it a little bit thicker. And then one other thing is if you have um, blocks, if you have your blocks, we're gonna do a variation of child's pose where we can have our hands on blocks, and it's um, a way for us to make this a little bit more focused on opening up the chest and the inner arm, kind of where the root of the arm and the armpit meet. So we are, oh, I remember one other thing that helps me here in this variation is you might take actually one of those blankets across your heels so that you can sit back and it'll get the butt to the heels a little bit more easily. So if you have a couch cushion or a stack of blankets or your bolster, that's gonna come out in front of you to be underneath your belly. Knees wide, 
And then the two blocks out in front of you at the head of your spot, top of your spot. And then ease your way forward into your forward fold and see if you need to adjust anything about the height of your props. And then the palms come down onto these blocks. The head can hang. So one of the ways that you can do this pose, you might find like, I don't need the thing underneath my belly. You can move that out of the way. Your palms can be on the blocks, or you might find that it's better for you to have it be your forearms. You can also grab opposite elbows. So trying to describe that your forearms can be going straight out ahead of you. You can bend at the elbows, grab opposite elbow let the head thread through and down. Let the forehead meet the floor or grab one of those blankets and bring the floor to your forehead. Okay, we're gonna hang out here for a little bit. Making any adjustments with the prop so that this feels really supportive to you. And we're looking for a very gentle sensation of stretch across the chest into the upper arms near the armpits. If for any reason you're feeling like, you know what, I really like this version of child's pose, you can ditch the blocks and just hang out in a more classic child's pose shape. And once we found our pose, we can let go of even controlling the breath. The breath can move neutrally. Let your body breathe for you. And feel for just sinking and settling into the support of the earth. around the heart area. Notice if there's anything that you could shift or adjust so that this pose might feel a little more comfortable. For me, I find that not using the um, bolster it's not working so well for my body grabbing elbows feels good and actually having my knees a little closer it feels better than wide so any of these elements you can play with you just find the expression of this pose that fits the best to you
And our mind might wander. That's what minds like to do. And that's absolutely okay. And see if you can bring your focus back into feeling some sensation in your body. Bring your attention back to feeling your breath. When you feel satisfied, you're ready to start to shift into the next shape. Slow inhale in through your nose. Let it out through your mouth. Gently press through the arms. The hands to the ground, pressing torso up. Moving the blocks off to the side. And coming all the way down onto your belly. So now we're laying all the way out of the belly. And it might be comfortable, it might make things even cozier if you put a blanket underneath your pelvis for these next few poses. So I'm going to give myself a little extra padding, blanket underneath the pelvis. Doesn't have to be like a lot of padding, just to make it a little more comfortable. And we're moving into Sphinx. Sphinx pose. So when you're ready, come on down to your belly. And bring the forearms up, palms down. Your legs can be as close or as wide as feels good for you today. A little bit different than when we're doing our low cobra, so we can Feel for relaxing in the glutes, letting the thigh bones and the feet root down into the earth. But the spine, we're feeling for that upper spine is reaching forward and rising upward. Forward and up. And find whatever position for the head and the neck that makes your neck feel neutral, feel comfortable. And breathe here. Notice the movement of your ribs as you're breathing in your sphinx pose. And again, make that connection with your attention from your heart to your hands, your hands to your heart. I think for years of doing this pose, in the forest yoga style, it's just really challenging for me to not use my glutes when I'm here. You might find that you need to use them a little bit if this is at all irritating for your low back. Like you can use that little bit of sit bone muscle squeeze to tilt the pelvis. You can also think of it as sending the pubic bones deeper into the ground, into your blanket and into the mat. But if your low back is feeling pretty okay here, see if you can do the exact opposite of like letting the glutes be as soft as they can. Letting that release travel down your thighs, your lower legs, and even into the soles of your feet. And keep feeling the upper spine, the thoracic spine, Lifting forward and up away from the earth. And when you're ready, just ease your chest all the way down to the ground and either 
stack your hands so that you have a pillow for your forehead or turn your head so that one side of your face is snuggled into the ground. You might feel good here before we do anything else just to do a little bit of organic movement like let your hips shift side to side wiggle out your butt let your legs and your feet shake out a little bit before we do anything else and we're simply going into a very mild version of half frog on the belly so we'll start with the right side just a really gentle inner leg and groin stretch Bend your right knee out to the right, any amount. It's not as important to have the ankle and the knee stay lined up with each other. Also making sure that your knee joint and your ankle joint, the bone feels comfortable. So if you're like me on some hardwood floor and coming into this posture, it takes your knee and your ankle onto the hardness. You put a little blanket underneath there so that you feel it's not so firm. You got a little cushion up to here. Cushion up the dress. And I'm just breathing here and just enjoying this really mild opening. The inner right leg, the inner hip. Again, what can soften. You're really supporting the earth while you're here. interesting to play in the yin poses with a deep breath and to see how that feels if you want to expand your breath into the low belly while you're here and the low back you can imagine like it could reach down as though your leg were hollow could you send your breath and fill kind of the the trunk of your right thigh The, the classic yin practice, you don't even have to do any kind of pranayama. We're just letting the body take the shape and become as effortless as possible. You can also just relax the breath here. Very gently straighten out the right leg back behind you. Again, it might feel good just to kind of wiggle out through the hips, let your butt sweep side to side. A little wiggle. And then if you need, move your props, move a blanket over to the floor to the left of you. And come into this on the other side. Gently bending the left knee to the left. You can take it more like a classic frog, like walk the ankle out a little bit so the ankle and the knee joint line up with each other. It's also okay if the, kind of the foot is a little closer towards midline. Either way, somewhere in there. Again, this side might be very different from the other side. Notice what you feel like. Running the left inner leg open. Left side of your leg. 
simply feeling how the earth is holding you. And snuggle into that support. Scan and feel your body is there anything to adjust that would make this pose feel a little more comfortable. And bring that down. And then let yourself sink back in. Sink back in a little deeper. When you're ready, really gently ease your leg back in from behind you. And let's revisit Sphinx, not for as long. We're just going to come back into that and give it a second round. So option to just use Sphinx, or if you'd like a deeper stretch, you can take the yin pose seal which kind of, you're pressing the hands from underneath the shoulders. So think like you're about to do an upward facing dog. You gotta walk your hands a little bit closer in. You're not going to lift the pelvis or the thighs off of the floor, but your arms push the hands into the earth, the ribs, the belly, the chest lift high up off the ground. Just hanging out here for another maybe just one minute or so if that feels too intense or like it's just way more work than you want to be doing right now oh, come on back down bring your elbows back out return to sphinx great way to choose is just noticing which one allows you to breathe and feel like you can hang out here for a minute without strength. So from your sphinx or from your seal, Slowly lower the chest down to the ground. The hands under the shoulders, tuck your toes under. And as you exhale, press yourself up to hands and knees. And you might do just a little bit of some organic movement, some cat cows or some variation of some circling or side stretching. You can also maybe want to stretch out the legs, just reach one foot back and then the other. Even take a downward facing dog if you needed. All right, so coming to a variation of hmm, 
This is a variation of hero's pose. So it's a big stretch for the front of the body. And in all honesty, it's one of the more challenging poses for my body. So I'm gonna give everybody the options. So there's lots of ways to do this. We're gonna find the one that feels the best. I like to use a lot of props. So like to start, if you have blocks, have one block about the lowest height and then the other block tall, kind of at the top of your mat. So you can create an incline with your couch cushion or your bolster, right? You just wanna make sure it's nice and sturdy for you. You might need to stack more pillows and things up on top of this. What I also find is having a bit of blanket all the way up at the very top of the bolster for a little extra bit of head support. Yeah. So for hero's pose, our back faces our bolster structure. And the very first thing you could do is actually just, you're kneeling. Let me start with that description. You're kneeling on your knees. Your heels are by your hips on either side of your butt. And people with more flexibility than me, you might actually have your butt meet the floor between your, between your feet. Mine doesn't go there. You could just let your butt sit on the edge of this incline or put blanket or another block under your sit bones. We kind of want the knees as close as they can be, tracking with the hips, but it's okay if you need to let your knees widen. From there, we can just sit up tall here. We can start to bring the hands to the floor and lean the torso back, right? So that's sort of like intermediate maybe. And then for some people, you might lean all the way back onto your bolster. And it just depends, you know, your, with your flexibility, how this works for you. Ooh not too crazy today. Honestly, for me, it's one of the poses that I rarely play with, so I've been interested in doing it more lately. Let's say that none of this works for you. You could absolutely do the um, variation of supported fish pose and ditch the kneeling posture part of this. Let your back lean back on your inclined bolster and let your legs take a different shape, like straight out, or baddha konasana, or knees bent. Now what to do with your arms? Once you've figured that part out, the arms can reach out left and right. If you want more of chest opening, your arms can come up and over, grab a hold of opposite elbows. So your armpits are open and facing the sky, the ceiling. So many options. Play around with finding the one that works the best for you. And then we're going to sink and settle into this pose for a couple minutes. Those of you that are in the variation of hero's pose, maybe feeling a mild to maybe kind of intense stretch through the front of the thighs and the front of the hips. Make sure that your head feels supported. It's not hanging in space and kind of leaning back and down. You want the back of your head on pillow or bolster.
just observe what is happening right now in this moment of sensations or is there an emotion that's here? Is there a thought that is here? is present in this moment, can we just be with them? And you feel if there's anything to change about this shape, maybe you want to change the position of your arms or add or remove some of the props so you have more height or you can go deeper into this pose by removing some of the height and let yourself lean back a little closer to the earth. Finishing up here, we're going to be here for just about one more minute, not much longer. And any adjustments that you need to make, make that and then see if you can settle back in a little deeper. When you're feeling ready to start to come out of this pose, take a deep inhale in through your nose, bring a little more air in, just stretch your inhalation. Let it out through your mouth. There are a, a lot of ways out of this version of Hero's Pose. The one that's been working the best for me is to get the hands to the floor or even to the bottoms of your feet. And I like to start actually at the head, chin to chest, push through your legs and your hands and slowly bring torso back up, go slow. And then for sure, this one, especially those of us that were in the hero's version, hero's pose version of this, you might wanna to come to your hands and knees Shake out your leg, bring one leg back, stretch it out, foot on the floor, you kind of bounce, just toes down, you can rock forward and then lean the heel back, just let some of that circulation flow through the whole leg now. Ooh, do the other side. Mm. Cool. Also totally okay to do a bit of a downward facing dog if you'd like to do that. Okay, my friends, now from here, let's do a twist. Getting ready, reset that bit of a back bend with a twist. So you're gonna move these blocks and stuff out of the way and put your bolster, your cushion, your pile of blankets if you have them Put those things off to the floor to the left of you and then lay down on your back. Take your time. Oh, so you're all the way down on the ground. Extend your left leg straight out from your hip. 
and pick up your, your right foot, knee towards chest. Left hand on the right leg, right arm can lay on the floor. And when you're ready as you're exhaling, help the leg across the body, turning the pelvis, turning the legs over to the left, and then bring the floor to your leg. If you can, propped underneath the right leg. Your left hand can just rest on top of the right thigh, help anchor it down. Right arm can reach out behind you to the right. And slowly and gently let the right shoulder, little bit by little bit, sink to the floor. Another position for the arms, if you want to try something different, you see if both of the arms could be in cactus pose, bent of the elbows, backs of the hands on the ground, palms facing up towards the ceiling. Notice what is able to soften here while you Sink deeper into this posture. If you want to add to this pose, you can also very gently turn your head to slightly look to the right. When you're ready, let your head come back to neutral. So your eyes and your nose and your chin are looking up towards the ceiling. Very gently, slowly, unwind your twist back to center. Bend both knees, put the feet on the ground. And if you're using those props, just grab them, put them over on the floor, the other side over to the right of you. And then settle your spine, your back, back into the earth. Stretch out through your right leg and pick up the left foot, bending left knee towards chest. You can guide it with the right hand while the left arm lays on the floor. As you exhale, take the other side. Slowly turn the ribs, pardon me, not the ribs, <laughs> the hips, the leg over to the right. and let your leg find those props. Find that support. And then you choose what to do with your hands. Maybe it feels comforting or supportive to hold on to the left leg with your right hand. The left arm can reach out behind you to the left. Or try cactus arms while you're here. See how that feels. You can also very gently turn your head to look to the left. See if anything else is ready to soften and release some tension here. And 
And when you're ready, bring the head to neutral if your head is turned. Inhale to very slowly and deliberately gently unwind back to center. It might feel good to pick up both of your feet, hug your knees in towards your chest, rock a little bit side to side. And then we're getting ready for our final pose, we're getting ready for Shavasana. So some ideas for Shavasana, if you have these things available, is to put a little bit of blanket behind the back of your head. So you have like a little bit of pillow behind the head. And then if you have some more blanket or bolster that can go underneath the knees, you do that. And then one other thing you can add if you have two blocks, pardon me, if you have two blocks, so the bolsters under your knees, but then you could give each foot a block. So you're bringing the floor to your heels as you lay back, back of head, resting on a little bit of blanket, a little pillow. So just adjusting, this is some, some options here. Ooh, I like that. And then last but not least, whatever shape you're doing, if there's something else you'd prefer, straight on the ground, no props, legs up the wall if you have that available to you, that's a great option. But I think most importantly, as we keep slipping deeper into cooler and cooler weather, just grab your blanket if you got an extra one and lay it over you so you stay warm. We'll get real cozy <sighs> and spend a few moments here finishing our practice with this final shape. giving your body permission to rest. And letting your attention move from the head, move from any thinking that you're doing, let it travel down into your heart space. Just rest right there in your heart. Feeling the rise and fall of your breathing. You might notice the beating of your heart and the pumping of your blood. Noticing what rises to the surface as you rest here in your heart space.
allow your physical body to stay at rest. If you wish to remain in this shape, you don't have to go anywhere. For those who are feeling ready to wake up from Shavasana and close your practice from sitting, Take a few moments here to start to wake up, maybe just by rolling the head left and right, letting it rotate on the neck. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Stretch or reach. Eventually bending your knees let yourself roll over to your favorite side, whatever side feels good to you, and rest there for a moment. Relaxing back into the ground. Until you feel ready to press hands and arms into the ground, start to come all the way back up to a comfortable seated position. Hmm. I'm just laying one or both hands over your heart. Let's take one more deep breath and internally honor the choice that you made to make space in your day just for you to come back to this place, this space inside of you. thanking yourself for giving yourself the gift of your practice today. Thank you very much for sharing your practice with me today. Until next time, take care, everyone. <laughs>